back for another week of Parenting Paused. Again, thank you for joining me for these uh, little special moments that I get to share with you some of my insights in my parenting. Um, I like to share how I came on to my view and my view came out of experience. It came out of seeing what worked and what didn't work in my parenting. And so it's such an honor to be able to share that with you. So my support is to inquire inside yourself and to see if some of the things that I share with you um, make sense. Um, some of them might trigger you a little bit, emotionally trigger you. You may go immediately, no. If you do, just see what it's like to question for yourself. I'm not presenting myself as an expert here. I'm presenting myself as a deep inquirer. And over the last 21 years with my daughter, I found many, many things that uh, lived in the recesses of my unconscious that even though I consciously thought I wanted to, uh, I'll talk about today, I wanted to have cooperation with my daughter, but when she wasn't cooperating, deep in my unconscious would rise up this template and these behaviors that actually did not support cooperation. They supported compliance. And this was quite shocking for me because I thought, you know, I'd read all my books and I'd done all my spiritual work and I thought, oh, I'm going to just be able to so easily have a relationship with my daughter that supports cooperation. Well, that was totally fine and it worked as long as she cooperated, <laughs> right? You probably know this one. But the minute that she stopped uh, cooperating, per se, and started to resist what I was bringing to her or what I wanted her to do, even though I thought it was in a cooperative spirit, but when she didn't experience that way and she put up a, a like I say like to say a little stop sign she showed some resistance I immediately found my parenting template from my past came up and I actually began to demand that she do what I say I got very forceful as I say I started pushing my agenda I started demanding that she you know listen to me that she do what I said and again, I want you to think about that for yourself. If anyone did that to you, if I did that to you right now, if I told you what you had to do and when you had to do it, and in that tone, which we get often when we're emotionally triggered and our children don't just go, oh, I would love to do that, mother, when they roll their eyes, they slam the door, or when they're little, they just resist by saying no. Often we will get emotionally triggered and then we feel powerless. Okay, so I want you to explore this yourself. I won't say you, we, I say I felt powerless when that happened. And my parenting template when I felt powerless was to be powerful. That's how I tried to compensate for that feeling of powerlessness. And powerful meant I could, you know, power over this little being or this being that I, when in my template, thought that I had control over. And then I would do all that in the name of cooperation. <laughs> I was very sneaky and tricky, and you might be too. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to talk to you today about what do you know about when you cooperate? Like, how does someone treat you when you cooperate, right? Do they talk in your high values do they come into your space with respect? Do they ask you your opinion? Do they come in 50-50? Do, you know, 50% of the time they get their needs met, 50% of the time you get yours met, right? Do you feel like cooperating? Or like when someone comes in and they only talk in their high values, they tell you what you need to do because they're the boss and they know what's best. They discount anything that you want they like belittle it in a way and make it like oh it doesn't really matter do you want to cooperate i mean just think about this it makes a lot of sense when we really look at it 
right? But most of the time we don't look at it. When we get emotionally triggered by our children not doing what we want and we feel powerless, then that is when power over strategies begin. Now, it's really innocent and honest because most likely you had a power over relationship with the adults in your life when you didn't do what they wanted. This is kind of pervasive, kind of going back into our history. So it takes an amazing amount of consciousness and awareness to come forth if your desire is cooperation. And I'm talking about this topic because so many parents that I talk to, they say, well, of course I want cooperation. I don't want to coerce my kid. I don't want to force my kid into compliance. And yet when we, or when you feel powerless, ask yourself, when I felt powerless, I was so in the weeds. I didn't know what to do because I felt like my kid had all the power and I felt so powerless. And so my compensation was to power over her and demand that she do what I say. Now that turned into compliance. So thankfully I had a kid that resisted. I think thankfully I had a kid that was defiant. I think thankfully I had a kid that refused. And also thankfully I was willing to look at that and to take responsibility for my emotional triggers and begin to start to cooperate with what I truly wanted, which was an environment of cooperation. So I started learning what made that happen. And I found that inside. Thank you for listening to this episode of Parenting Paused. If you enjoyed the episode, do me a favor and share it with your mama friends. You can also leave a review wherever you listen, which will support getting the Pure Joy message out. Come on over to the Pure Joy Parenting Practice Facebook page or join me on Instagram to hear more. And don't forget to download your free copy of the Safe Seat course on the Pure Joy website. And while there, check out the offerings page to go deeper in the Pure Joy work.